So I'm here today with Jeff Young, who is the principal at Young & Associates. Jeff, tell us what Young & Associates does. So we're a public accounting firm that uh, offers SOC 1 and SOC 2 and also uh, SOX um, compliance help for its clients and customers. Boy, Jeff, that's a lot of acronyms. Absolutely. What's a SOC and what's a SOX? SOX is uh, Sarbanes-Oxley. That came out of all those en uh, the Enron scandal and uh, is basically uh, a standard for more of a um, requirement for public companies to go through for their internal controls over financial reporting. And then there's an SOC reports out there, SOC 1 and SOC 2. So those are service organization control reports. And uh, just like the title states, uh, service organizations get these reports and they're more uh, controls surrounding financial reporting for SOC 1. And then for SOC 2, it's over the trust principles which is for security, availability, processing integrity, and privacy. And these are outward facing uh, uh, reports that you can be given to your customers, restricted reports, but you can still give them to your customers after signing NDNAs and um, getting the proper um, authorization to release the report. So Jeff, Matrix Group, you're here this week doing the audit for us. It's a lot of time and money for us to go through this process. Why do you think it's important for companies to go through the SOC process? Yeah, so uh, for one, kind of validate the company's uh, internal controls. Uh, you guys are doing a um, SOC, SOC 2 report over the security trust principle. Yep, security, yes, since our third year. Yep, and it's, it's very important to get to that next level of client. Uh, the more sophisticated the client, usually they require the SOC, uh, a SOC examination or uh, a third party validating uh, your internal controls. A lot of times companies find themselves in a contractual obligation to provide these reports, or sometimes it can be uh, you know, a, a customer of your, vend of your customer uh, that is a public company that is requiring uh, some kind of validation of internal controls. Now Jeff, you say the first year is always the hardest, and it certainly was for us. Why is it so hard? Uh, there's really not too many compliance-based audits like the SOC report. Uh, it goes into every aspect of the business. It goes into communication. It goes into entity-level controls. It goes into security controls. It can go into financial statement controls under a SOC 1 report. Uh, a lot of companies underestimate the time and effort that's going to be needed to complete the assessment. and. Uh, you know, sometimes people just try to push it off onto one person, either in IT or in accounting, Big depending mistake. on what report. <laughs> and it's, a, it's much easier to get, uh, you know, a, a group of people and senior leadership involved early on in the process. It definitely takes a village to do this, not just one person to, to spearhead it. It definitely takes a, the, the right people, identifying the key people, and uh, working through that project and, you know, getting senior leadership involved early is very helpful. So what's the barrier to getting started? Getting the ball rolling, identifying the right people, and uh, identifying what trust, either either you're gonna do a SOC 1 for over financial reporting or a SOC 2, or you can do both. I've seen a lot of companies now doing both. Uh, identifying who your key audience is and what are they gonna wanna see in that report. Uh, that can be probably the hardest thing I've seen a lot of companies struggle with because they don't know exactly, they just got a request for a SOC report or it's in a contract, but then they say, well, you know, Jeff, what, what do you think our customers are gonna to wanna to see in this report? And then that's when we have to start talking about their business, getting understanding and understanding what that client, that customer that's requesting, what are they gonna to wanna to see in that report? Are they interested in financial statement transactions or are they really interested in how you're processing that information or the security over that and do either do a SOC 1 report or a SOC 2 report. Jeff, what kind of companies get this? So like Matrix Group, we're getting SOC 2 certified under the security trust principle because we host you know, our clients' data and I guess our clients want to know that we're handling this information in a secure way and keeping their website safe. But I mean, big companies do this too, right? Like Amazon? Absolutely. Google, as well as other types of companies, banks. Yep. So uh, service organizations are definitely going to want to, you know, probably either got requested or do go through the SOC process. So uh, the bigger companies absolutely do it. And then also all the um, mid-tier companies that support those bigger companies get SOC reports because the bigger company has to report on its internal controls uh, 
uh, for Sarbanes-Oxley and for its customers, but it relies on a lot of third-party vendors or service organizations to, pro to provide that service. Uh, for like, for instance, in your guys' case, you host a lot of data for your, your clients, you host their website, you're interacting with their data. So when they're looking at their internal controls, well, they say, well, you know, we really rely on Matrix Group for all of these types of internal controls and these types of security controls. So that's why in turn you hand over that SOC report to your customers and then they can validate those controls. Well, Jeff, it is always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Matrix Minute. Don't forget to connect with us on our blog and social media. For more information, go to matrixgroup.net.